Shalom Chabrim. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. Guys, uh, you'll be seeing maybe about 10 minutes of this particular broadcast here on Israeli News Live. You'll be able to catch the rest of this broadcast on our new channel, Danoon Institute. Uh, that's what we started off being here uh, to begin with on Israeli News Live. We've gone more into the prophetic realm of news broadcasting. When we see that something fits prophetic uh, events, we'll bring that out continually here on Israeli News Live. But we're trying to get the, our, our teaching part of our ministry moved over to Danoon Institute. So we trust it'll be a blessing for you tonight. Uh, it's a very serious message indeed that I want to share with you. Uh, I'm not going to be playing church tonight, I promise you. I, 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 we're living in a late hour, guys. We're living in a very late hour. And I have to say some things here tonight that are very serious um, for both my Jewish brothers as well as my Christian friends as well, Christian brothers and sisters too. Um, by the way, if what we do is a blessing to you and you want to be a part of what we're doing and God has laid it upon your heart to support the work we're doing, um, you can go... In the description link here below, I'll have the links to both our website, websites, israelinewslive.org. We have a place you can donate online there, as well as israelreturns.com. I'll also put our PayPal link in there. Uh, I did have a sister, and I couldn't find her, her message again to respond to her. She was telling me that her card was not working on our PayPal links. Uh, we are working on trying to resolve that issue. Um, but we'll have to create an, an entirely new website, which we are going to be doing very soon. And we will get with our bank here to create a credit card type system only for that. So I apologize, sister. Thank you so kindly for being so diligent to, to get that message to us as well. Uh, we'll also put a link, direct link to our PayPal uh, account there. Uh, and generally, most any credit card can be used there, but some people do run into that issue. Uh, and as well, you can uh, buy mail. If you'd like to donate uh, by mail, you can do that. To uh, It's at the end of the video as well, and I'll put the address in the description below also for that as well. It's in Prague, Czech Republic, PO Box 46 in here in Prague. Uh, so anyway, thank you and God bless you for your kindness and to support this work. Let's get right into this message tonight. It's from the book of Lamentations chapter 4. And Lamentations deals with the house of Judah going into captivity. And I'm really, I've got some things I'm going to say tonight, friends. It's not pleasant. I have to be firm about things because we're, we're, we're too far down the road. We're getting too far down the road. And um, so bear with me, pray for me as I share the things that I'm going to share with you tonight. Lamentations chapter 4, how has the gold become dim? How is the most fine gold changed? The hallowed stones are poured out in the head of every street. Remember, Jerusalem is called the city of gold. Okay? City of gold. The precious sons of Zion, comparable to fine gold. How are they esteemed as earthen pitchers, earthen vessels in the King James, I believe it says. The work of the hands of the potter. Remember how Jesus so often said that? He says, you know, he says, I am the potter, you are the clay. Paul in Romans, I believe it is, says, you know, goes down to the potter's house and be broken into shivers. You know, but once the pot is broken, it cannot be remolded. But it's still, it's, it's an allegory that he's using because he wants to be made over again to where God will be a vessel pleasing unto God, right? Okay, so even the jackals draw out the breast. They give suck to their young ones. The daughter of my people has become cruel. Like the ostrich in the wilderness. This is speaking about the destruction of Israel in 70 AD, the, the house of Judah, when they go into captivity, the final dispersion. The house of Israel had gone into captivity 780 years before that, right? Now let's move on down a few verses here. For the iniquity of the daughter of my people is greater than the sin of Sodom that was overthrown as in the moment and no hands fell upon her. Her princes were purer than snow. They were whiter than milk. They were Ruddy in body than, than rubies, their you know, polishing was as a sapphire. Their visage is blacker than coal. They are not known in the streets. Their skin is shriveled upon their bones. It has withered. It has become like a stick, like starvation. Now, I know, and let me just, I, I did do a special video. I haven't loaded it as of yet, but I will be loading it on to an institute. 
uh, as well. And that's for the black brothers and sisters. I know there's a, there is a major move uh, with the black community saying that all the Jews are black and, and some of them even go on so far as to say they were cursed and because of uh, lamentations here and it's as a result of this here that they were turned black by God and that's how you know who the true Jews are. And I get some pretty out Outrageous comments and even some people get very angry and say you can't be no Jew you Anglo-Saxon and stuff Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna fix that for you right now And I'm doing it because I love you my black brothers and sisters I really do love you those that have gotten off into this this false doctrine and I have to call it a false doctrine now There are black Jews. I agree with that hundred percent I mean, if I, if I didn't agree with that, I wouldn't be in line with the Bible. Moses married a woman that was an uh, Ethiopian woman, you know, from what, what we find in the historical records about Moses. Uh, he was made fun of by the Jewish people because he didn't marry a girl of their own people, according to what's written in the Bible, what we see there. And if she, was, if she wasn't darker, they wouldn't have made fun of her. You understand? So it shows then that the Jews were not originally black either. And of course, some of the black people are saying it's not that. They, they turn black because of a curse. And this is one of the usages here. All right? Let me just help you, though. Their visage is blacker than coal, right? All right. Now, shachal is the word for black in Hebrew, okay? This here is, right here, is the word for what you're calling visage, all right? has nothing to do with your skin, or in skin is spelled ein vav reish. That's how you spell the word for skin. It's pronounced the same though, or, all right? It says, Hoshik mishachor ta'oram. All right, what is he saying? You, you have to kind of reverse the order in the way Hebrew goes here. Your light is darker than coal. In other words, Remember, he's using the allegory already in this whole part here. He says they, they were the gold, right? They were the gold. And now their light has become darkened. Darkened, darker than coal. In other words, wickedness has set in. The light of God that once lit up the temple, the Shekinah glory that once dwelled inside the temple for the house of Judah had been darkened like coal. You're supposed to be believers. You are that temple. They talk about building a third temple and trying to get uh, Vladimir Putin and, and, and Donald Trump to build the third temple. Well, you know, I would appreciate they build the third temple. That would be nice. It would be like, nice to have a church there for, for the Jewish people to go to. And forgive me, my Jewish brothers, for saying it like that. A synagogue for my Jewish brothers and sisters to go to. All right? But use it as a house of prayer, not as a house of murder. The sacrifice has already paid the price. You understand what I'm saying? We are that temple. Let me tell you something. The two witnesses are not coming to build a temple made by hands. They're coming to get the Jews to wake up to the temple that they themselves are the temple and the Shekinah glory wants to dwell inside of them. And let me tell you something. Rabbis know that too. Don't think they don't. They do. All right? By the way, I should put a disclaimer at the beginning of the video. I might be shouting and screaming in this video, so if, if it bothers you, I, I'm sorry, uh, but I don't have time to play church. I don't have time. There's too many souls that are involved. And for my black brothers and sisters, I just wanted to clarify you. Hoshik means darkness. Od means light. Okay, their light in their beings had become darkened like black coal. It has nothing to do with their skin. Okay, nothing to do with it at all. About the only place you can find in the Bible is Job. And Job, I think chapter 30, verse 30, something like that. I may be wrong on the verse or the chapter both. But Job talks about he sat in the sun so long that his skin, ein vavresh, or had become black, shecha, you know, and he says, because I've sat here in the sun so long. Well, yeah, my great-grandmother, who was a Creek Indian, she was Creek Indian, you take her pictures. I remember my Aunt Debbie one time. My Aunt Debbie, we're going through old photographs. She didn't have her glasses on. I said, Aunt Debbie, I said, who's this right here? And she thought it was a girl that was a good friend of hers in Hawaii who was a black girl. But it was my great-grandmother. I said, no. I said, no, 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 no. I'm talking about the girl sitting with her. I know. I said, that's my grandma, you know. Yeah, because she was Creek Indian in her skin. She was very, very dark, like a black person would be dark. You know, my father's side of the family. 
Many of them look more European now, but they were from Moroccan Jews. I've got a cousin, famous cousin in, in Israel, Benun. He's much darker than I am. All right? But same from my father's side, cousins and all. Anyway, so it has nothing to do. My wife did a, had a beautiful revelation not long ago, and it was over Joseph's coat of many colors. And by the way, in Hebrew it says coat of long sleeves. And I always wonder, where do they get the coat of many colors from? Because I know in Hebrew it says coat of long sleeves. It's the Septuagint. The Septuagint, which is older than the Hebrew Bible we have today, actually says that he wore a coat of many colors. And Yana said, she came to me one day and she said, God has revealed to me why Joseph wore a coat of many colors. It was representing the Jewish people, God knowing they would be dispersed to the four corners of the earth and they would be a people of many colors. And sure enough, as Israel comes home today, as they come home to see the greater Joseph, Yeshua, Jesus of Nazareth, it is his coat of many colors. This is the coat of the Messiah's many colors because his people have been dispersed to the Chinese, to the black race, to, the, to, to Ethiopia, to, to the Indians in America, to the Anglo-Saxon in Europe, and to, the, and to the down in Yemen, the Yemenite Jews and stuff. A coat of many colors. That is where that is. God, oh, man. Anyway. They that are slain with the sword are better than they that are slain with the hunger. For these pine away, stricken through for, for want and for fruits of the field. The hands of women full of compassion have sodden their own children. They were their food in the destruction of the daughter of my people. Can you imagine that? The Jewish people eating their own children. You see, I mean, when, when the light of God goes out of you, the evils that you will do. The Lord hath accomplished His fury, and He hath poured out His fierce anger. He hath kindled a fire in Zion, which He hath devoured in the foundations thereof. The kings of the earth believed not, neither the inhabitants of the world, that, that, that the adversary, the enemy, would enter into the gates of Jerusalem. Nobody ever thought that Jerusalem could be trodden down, because God protected Israel. It has become the sins of her prophets and the iniquities of her priests that did it. And that needs to sink home in America because let me tell you something, my American brothers and sisters. You are a country that led the nation, led the nations in Christian revivals. And what has she become now? I, I'm not saying that there's not genuine prophecies that come out of America or genuine dreams, but I will tell you one thing. America has become the most false prophet nation of them all. I have seen more prophetic things spoken out of the mouths of Americans, not just Americans, all across the world as well, but Americans especially, so-called professed Christians, and I mean many of them probably are Christians. They mean well, but they have prophesied more lies and had dreams that, are, that have failed more than anything you could ever imagine. So did Israel. Let me tell you something. Do you think Israel, before her destruction, do you think that she didn't, she was still offering up the, 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 the scapegoat every year, was let out the will, loose in the wilderness? They kill, still killed the sacrificial goat for the sins of the people. They still brought in the turtle doves. They still brought in the, the rams and the lambs and everything else at the temple. And if you think that those lambs and rams and all that were getting, doing away with their sins, then something's wrong. Because if it worked, if it was getting rid of their sins, and pardoning their iniquities, then God would have never sent them into exile. Why did Jesus come and let them all go? He knew it didn't do them no good. What they needed was a revival inside of their own hearts. He had to come and pay that price himself. And that's the same thing happening in America today. Not just America, Europe, New Zealand, Australia, the churches in Russia, all around the world. It's so messed up that God says He's got to send two witnesses to get, this, to get the problem straightened out. They wandered as blind men in the streets. They are polluted with blood so that men cannot touch their garment. 
Depart ye, unclean men cried unto them, Depart, depart, touch not ye that fled away and wandered men said among the nations, They shall no more sojourn here. The anger of the Lord hath divided them. He will no more regard them. They respected not persons of the priests. They were not gracious unto the elders. As for us, our eyes do yet fail. Our vain help and our watching, we have watched for a nation that could not save. They hunt our steps that we cannot go in our broad places. Our end is near. Our days are fulfilled for our end is come. Our pursuers were swifter than the eagles of the heaven. They chased us upon the mountains. They lay in the wait for us in the wilderness. That was the Romans. Hmm. Let me tell you something. I want you to think about this as you're listening to what I'm telling you. That was the Roman soldiers of that day. NATO is the Roman soldiers for the Vatican in modern days. Keep that in mind. The breath of our nostrils, the anointed of the Lord, was taken in their pits, of whom we said, under his shadow we shall live among the nations. They knew they were going to be dispersed. Rejoice and be glad, O daughter of Adam. That's Rome that dwellest in the land of Uz, the cup shall pass over unto thee also. Thou shalt be drunken and shalt make thyself naked. Does anybody remember Revelation? The Laodicean church age? Or Laodicean church? Some people call it church age. It's, let me tell you something. It's not an age. Every one of these churches, every one of them have been in every age. I consider that we've been down through, through, through ages, yes. But all seven churches of Asia Minor have been typed in every age that we have had. And in modern age today, the end times that we're living in now, all seven churches are present again, including Laodicea, who says she is rich and has need of nothing. And knowest not, thou art blind, poor, miserable, and naked, and don't know it. Blind, miserable, naked, and don't know it, right? What does he say here? Thou shalt be drunken and shalt make thyself naked. All right? Interesting, isn't it? Edom, Rome, Rome's soldiers. Remember, because this is all about Rome's soldiers. He said, the cup shall be passed over unto thee. Yeah, let, me, let me show you where that got fulfilled. Obadiah, verse 16. For as you have drunk upon my holy mountain, so shall all the nations drink continually. Yea, they shall drink and swallow down. Actually, I read further. See? That's masculine plural. The Pope of Rome in 2014, during his Catholic Mass on his Easter Sunday went to the upper room, held a Mass there, drank wine out of the cup with men only. Shatetem. Masculine plural. Men only. See? Alhar Kodeshi, upon my holy mountain. And by the way, that holy mountain is right here in Mount Zion. But in Mount Zion, who Uvehar Zion, all right? So you know which mountain he's talking about. My holy mountain is Mount Zion. Ishatu kol hagoim. And the Gentiles or the nations shall drink what tamid continually. Well, what do you know? More than one denomination came on down there and they continued to drink. The cup has been passed off. You see now why I don't want nothing to do with joining into the Catholic Church and their crusades? It's modern day crusades that they're doing right now. When Putin offered a better deal 
in Ukraine for the Ukrainian people for Yanukovych. The Catholic Crusades came and they toppled. They toppled what Putin was going to do. And let me tell you something, there's a lot of evidence that supports that the Vatican was very much behind that crusade to take Ukraine away from Yanukovych. All right? So, just so you know what's going on there. The punishment of thine iniquity is accomplished, O daughter of Zion. Wow. He will no more carry thee away into captivity. He will punish thine iniquity, O daughter of Adam. He will uncover thy sins. So Israel is in her homeland. And, I, and, I, and believe me, I am not for the political Zionist movement that goes about taking and trying to do the greater Israel project and kill off all the Arabs in the region. I'm not for that at all. But I will say one thing. When they opened up the land of Israel for the Jewish people to come home, they tried at first through the British mandate to limit the number of Jews that could come in. Why? Because Rome only wanted to get certain Jews into power so they could control the future of Israel. You don't believe it? Then you tell me then in 1950, 1949, 1950, when they did this magic carpet thing that brought the Yemenite Jews back home from Yemen, uh, from Yemen a huge number of Jews were brought home. But suddenly, about a thousand children went missing. These women, they, what, what few are alive, they're still, I know there was one that did an article the other day, 92 years old, still weeping for her child that was taken from her. If this is not a biblical prophetic event, if this is not Rachel weeping for her children in modern times and Hezekiah trying to build the third temple, I don't know what it is. And I know I meant second temple, but I said third temple because they're going to have Hezekiah, King Hezekiah, a good old Roman governor, come in there, put him on the helm there, and let the Hezekiah build the third temple. No, sir, I'm not for it. Don't forget what Herod did. Don't forget what Herod had, what he did. That Ro he was the Roman uh, governor there of that, of that age. Well, actually, the governor was Pontius Pilate. Herod was, uh, was the prefect over the whole entire area. And what did he do when he was trying to find Yeshua, trying to find that anointed Messiah, wanting to make sure that he didn't get involved in there? He went and killed off all the Jewish babies? Three years old and down? Or two years old and down it is? What happened to the Yemenite children then? Why has it been covered up by the government? They say it's not a conspiracy. Sure it's a conspiracy. You want to know why? I don't know for sure, but I have a feeling that what it was is they were afraid that as they grew and the children grew and they married and they had more children, they would outnumber the Ashkenazi Jews that were there and then they would end up taking control in the government there and Rome couldn't have that. I don't think the conspiracy necessarily was in the Israeli government, but I guarantee you one thing, I know who owned the majority of the hospitals in that land during that time. I would go looking there for my children that were Yemenites, that, were, that they claimed that so many of them died, but other paperwork is proving out that they were actually adopted. Some of them sent back to Europe. You tell me who got them. Satan is still busy. Don't think he's not. That's a modern day scripture reenactment of the scripture all over again. Rachel weeping for her children and, and cannot be you know, silenced because they're not anymore. My God, a stain on the flag of Israel that this actually happened. I don't know who's all, who was all involved in that, but that was a stain for the people of Israel. Anyway, that cup is being passed over. It's going to be passed over to Adam now. Her days are numbered. Let's continue on. Zechariah chapter 12, verse 6 here. And that day will I make the chiefs of Judah like a pan of fire among the wood and like a torch and a fire among the sheaves. And they shall devour all the peoples round about on the right hand and on the left. And Jerusalem shall be inhabited again in her own place, even in Jerusalem. Now let me show you something here. This speaks of war. And I'm for, for, for the Jewish people returning to their homeland in peace. But see, the prophet knew that when they returned back, that they would be fighting. He knew the 67 war would come. And I believe that's what he saw here. But watch what happens. The table turns. 
The Lord also shall save the tents of Judah first, that the glory of the house of David and the glory of the inhabitants of Jerusalem be not magnified above Judah. In that day shall the Lord defend the inhabitants of Jerusalem, and he that stumbleth among them at that day shall be as David. And the house of David shall be as a godlike being, as the angel of the Lord before them. See? Notice what he says there. The inhabitants of Jerusalem, and he that stumbleth among them at that day shall be as David. You know where David made his mistake? David made his mistake when he took Bathsheba, Uriah's wife. That's where he stumbled. That's what brought a lot of sin on the house of David. That's what caused David to have to leave Jerusalem. Don't forget that, my Jewish brothers and sisters. You're going to be leaving Jerusalem as well. And you know why? Because what David did wrong and where David stumbled with Bathsheba, Israel has done the same today by bringing Mechodeshet into Israel and engaging the Catholic Church and bringing Jezebel into our land. You have stumbled. And David, because of his stumbling, it caused him to have to leave Jerusalem. And you as well will have to leave Jerusalem. But God will still be with you. That's what he says here when he says, And the house of David shall be as a godlike being, as the angel of the Lord before them. God will still protect you. He'll still stay with you. But that's where the sin will come. It's already begun. And it shall come to pass in that day that I will seek to destroy all the nations that come against Jerusalem. And I will pour upon the house of David and upon the inhabitants of Jerusalem the spirit of grace and of supplication, and they shall look unto me because they have thrust him through, and they shall mourn for him as one mourneth for his only son, and shall be as in bitterness for him as one that is in bitterness for his firstborn. Where is this apply? Many of the Jewish people today, because in the King James it says pierce, in Hebrew it does, it says thrust through. All right, I know that, I understand that, but what is it? We handed over, our forefathers handed Yeshua over to the Romans to be executed. So we, as accessory to the crime, and when the Roman soldier pierced his side, thrust him through in the side, we fulfilled that passage right there. We will look upon him. Not only was his hands and feet pierced, but we will see where his side was thrust through with that spear, and we will weep and mourn. And God holds Israel responsible for that act because he says it here. In that day shall there be a great mourning in Jerusalem as in the morning of uh, Hadrimimon in the valley of Megiddon. And the land shall mourn every family apart, the family of the house of David apart, their wives apart, and the family of the house of Nathan apart, their wives apart, the family of Levi apart, and their wives apart, the family of Shemites apart, and their wives apart. Why Shemai? Hashemi, why Shemai? Let me tell you something. I'll tell you why Shemai. You remember the story of David? Remember what he just said up here? David stumbled. God said you're going to stumble as well. You did stumble. When you allowed the engagement of the Catholic Church to come in there to try to marry the Muslim, the Christian, and the Jews together, the Mekodesha, which means espoused, to engage. When you did this, you have stumbled as David stumbled and took Uriah's wife, which was not his wife. Bathsheba was not his. We have no business, have no business taking another man's wife. And you've tried to do this. And let me tell you something else. Uh, let, me, let, me, let me take you over here. To, hang on one second. I've got to take you to Daniel. Give me one second. Let me go, jump over to Obadiah. In Daniel's prophecy, right? I want to show you where it's at, my Jewish brothers and sisters that are listening in tonight. Rabbi Tovia Singer, I'm going to send it to you. I know you'll listen to it. And I pray, my brother, that you'll wake up I saw you preaching the very messages that I've been preaching lately. You're saying it to your people. You're teaching them about Rome. I sent you the messages, and ever since I sent them to you, you started preaching it yourself. I pray you'll preach the whole truth, my brother. 
And I'll gladly talk to you, my brother, but I want to talk to you in person. All right. Let's go over to the book of Daniel real quick here. My mind racing right now, just by God's grace, revealing things as, we're sit as I'm sitting here. Okay, Daniel, chapter 11. Okay, let's go down to verse, I think it's verse 14 in Daniel 11. In those times there shall many stand up against the king of the south. Also the children of the violent among thy people shall lift themselves up to establish the vision. All right, let me clarify something here. And you, my Jewish brethren, you'll know what I'm speaking about when I say this right here. All right? Uvene uh, amcha. Right here. Uvene paratsi amcha. And the lawless of your people. Daniel's people were the Jews, right? He's a Jew. The lawless of your people. Inasu. 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 We'll try to what? Mary, what? Lahamid. Hazon. They're trying to marry the vision, but they're going to fail. Okay, why are you going to fail? The two witnesses will come in and put a stop to this nonsense. God will do something. All right. Jump back over here. Let me, get, let me take this back to Obadiah because I'm going to need it in here in just a moment. Okay. Oh, praise be to God. Okay. Now, back over to Zechariah. So, Shemai. Why was it Shemai? As I said to you, David, because of his sins, his son, Abs Absalom. Absalom is how you say it in English. Absalom is how you say it in Hebrew, his name, which means my father is peace. Absalom doesn't recognize that David is God's true anointed king for that day. Just like my Jewish brothers that were there 2,000 years ago when the man Jesus, Yeshua, HaMashiach, if you don't want to call him Mashiach, that's up to you, okay? But Yeshua, the Messiah, Jesus, when he come walking in there, Israel did not recognize David or Jesus to be the true anointed of God. And yet he was their brother. He was not only their brother, he was their father. How do you know? What is David called? He, or his, son, his son, he named Absalom, Absalom. My father is peace. What is Yeshua called in Isaiah, the prophecy about uh, Yeshua? Isaiah, he's called the, the mighty God, the counselor, the prince of peace. My father is peace. The everlasting Father, Isaiah 9, 6. Is that right? So what happens? Absalom didn't recognize his own father. He turns against him, lifts himself as, as if he's king. David leaves the city, goes over. He weeps on the mount, over there on Mount of Olives, looking back over Jerusalem. Didn't Yeshua do the same thing? Yeshua said, how often I would have hovered you as a hen with her own brood, but you would not. He said, your house, this house, is left desolate until you say, blessed is he that comes in the name of the Lord. You're thinking it's the temple, don't you? I believe the temple will go up, but the temple will go up only as a sign that God has returned to fill the true temple, the souls of man with the Holy Spirit. Okay? So anyway, he weeps over as well. But when he's leaving, when David's leaving, who meets David? Go back and look at it in the book of Kings or Chronicles. It's Shemai, the Benjamite. And Shemai is throwing stones at David and his men. And his men, they want to kill him. Just like Yeshua, just like Jesus' disciples. When they come after Jesus, they... What did Peter do? He cut the, high, the, the, the guard for the high priest, cut his ear off, cut the servant's ear off. Jesus said, put away your sword, Peter. Could I not call ten legions of angels right now if I wanted to? What did David say? Let him alone. God told him to do it. Who's the one that met David back down on the way, though? Who's the one that was the first one to meet David when he was coming back? And by the way, before David came back across that river, what did David do? David said this here. What did he say? He told the two priests, the two witnesses, 
He said, get them in one mind and one accord so I can come back. He said, and he asked him, he says, why have you waited so long to have me come back? Those two priests were like two witnesses. Shimei, though, meets him down at the river to, to repent for what he did. Shimei, again, is mentioned. It's for the tribe of Benjamin. And the reason why they're not in tribal order here, they're mentioned by family names, is because today the Jews don't know what family they belong to. They don't know what tribe they're part of. They don't know for sure if they're Levites or if they're Benjamites or if they're from Judah, the tribe of Judah. David and Nathan are from the tribe of Judah. The Levites naturally from Levi. And Shimei was a Benjamite. And of course, all the families that remained were the Samaritans. They were half Jews, half Gentiles because of the Syrian army, those women that were impregnated by the soldiers that ended up staying, that were not part of the dispersion of the house of Israel. All right, let's move on. I'm about to lose my voice here. Brother Kellen Davison sent this to me today, and I thought it was a beautiful verse, so I wanted to share this with you. Verse, uh, it's actually in Jeremiah 31. Let's look at verse 32. But this is the covenant. Verse 31 is one most people, let me read, start verse 31. Not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day that I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt. For as much as they broke my covenant, although I was a Lord over them, saith the Lord, but this is the covenant that I will make with who? With the house of Israel. After those days, saith the Lord, I will put my law in their inward parts. In their heart will I write it. And I will be their God, and they shall be my people. And they shall teach no more every man his neighbor, and every man his brother, saying, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me from the least of them unto the greatest of them. And saith the Lord, saith the Lord for I will forgive their iniquity, and their sin will I remember no more. That's the house of Israel. The house of Israel is still dispersed across the entire earth. But if God has put His laws in your heart, you know how you know that? You man, you ever committed adultery in your life? Whether you were young, old, whatever the case may be, and yet you knew something inside of your heart told you that was wrong. You ever took a life and you know something inside of you, it don't feel good to take a life. Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not covet. You don't have to write them on stone. They're in your heart. They're supposed to be in all of our hearts. Maybe sometimes we've just been darkened from sin and we've suppressed these things. But the house of Israel, the laws are on the tables of their heart. That's how you know where you belong. Going into the two witnesses, I just want to just jump into this real quick because you know there's so many excited about Donald Trump, and they're calling for Donald Trump and Putin to come together to build the third temple. So many people are saying, you know, it's another case of Cyrus, uh, you know, the, the called for the building of the third temple. I appreciate that, but I'm going to tell you something. God is not calling Donald Trump or Vladimir Putin to build the third temple. Israel should have long ago stood up to build a temple for the Jewish people in their land. They took it in 1967. They should have built the third temple then. Do you think if Donald Trump and Vladimir Putin came along to build the third temple for the Jewish people today, that there would be any less war today than it would be in 1967? No. And they're not the two witnesses. But yeah, they might be like that of Cyrus, Darius. They might end up being men like that that are courageous to help the Jews get a third temple built. But I can guarantee you one thing. You have to remember, what is a Freemason? What has been his lifelong dream to do? It's to build a third temple for the Pope of Rome. I do a little bit of checking in the background to see who these men really are. Okay? And I'm not saying that there's not Mason people that do not profess Christianity. Most Masons do. But Freemasonry... It's in their book. I've got one. A friend of mine gave it to me. 
the 33rd degree Mason book. Anybody can get it. You can order them online. They're old, but you can find them. And I read it in there, and I've, I've shared it before. I'll have to share it again with you guys. They have swore, they have an oath to build the third temple for the Pope of Rome. So if they build it, it's not going to be for the Jews. They might say it is, but it won't be for the Jews. All right? So anyway. Ah, <sighs> jeez. God have mercy. This is when God was speaking to Moses. And this is a prophecy, by the way, friends, that has never been fulfilled. And you can ask any Jewish rabbi, he'll tell you, it never was fulfilled. They had to change the wording. They actually retranslated it in the Jewish Bibles because it hadn't been fulfilled. And so therefore, they, they figured it was figuratively fulfilled. Keep in mind, we're reading in Exodus 34, chapter, uh, chapter 34, verse, starting with verse 6 here. Moses has already been told by God he's not going into the promised land for smiting the rock the second time. Not the first time, the second time. All right? But now God is going to tell Moses he's going to the promised land. A little odd. And the Lord passed by before him and proclaimed, the Lord, the Lord God, merciful and gracious, long-suffering and abundant in goodness and truth, keeping mercy unto thousands of generations, forgiving iniquity and transgression and sin, and that will by no means clear the guilty, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children, upon the children's children, and the third and the fourth generation. But notice the forgiving of the iniquity and the transgression. This is Daniel 9, 24. Okay? Keeping mercy unto the thousand generation okay Moses is coming back and Moses made haste and bowed his head toward the earth and worship and he said if now I have found grace in thy sight O Lord let the Lord I pray thee go in the midst of us for it is a stiff-necked people and pardon our iniquity and our sin and take us for thine inheritance Israel's a very stiff-necked people even to this day. But Moses comes for the pardoning of the iniquity of Israel according to Daniel chapter 9 verses 24 on down to 27. And he said, Behold, I make a covenant before all thy people. I will do marvels. Okay, no. All right. I, I make a covenant, all right? Barit, Barit right here, he makes the covenant. Karit Barit. All right. Nagid kol amcha. All right. Now let's look over here. I'll make a covenant before all thy people. I will do marvels. Nagid kol amcha. All right. I will do marvels before all thy people. Nagid is wonders, not marvels. Miracles. Incredible miracles. Watch what he says. Such as have not been wrought in all the earth, nor in any nation, and in all the people among which you are, shall see the work of the Lord that I am about to do with you. That is, it is tremendous. Okay? A tremendous work. A creative work. O say imcha. A work. But actually, uh, not Oseas to do. Hang on. Koham Ashar Ata Bekarabo et Maose Yahua Ki Nore. Who? A wonder. Uh, uh, God is going to do such a mass, incredible work that all the people will see that He's among. But it seems to imply it's a different people. Observe thou that which I am commanding you this day. Behold, I am driving out before you the Amorite, the Canaanite, the Hittite, the Perizzite, the Hivite, and the Jebusite. Moses never went into the land to see that. Take heed to yourself, lest that you make a covenant with the inhabitants of the land, whether, you go, whether thou goest, lest they be a snare in the midst of thee. But you shall break down their altars, and dash in pieces their pillars, and you shall cut down their, their asherim. For thou shalt bow down to no other god, for the Lord, whose name is Jealous, is a jealous God. Moses will return. This has never been fulfilled. 
Neither was it ever fulfilled when Moses says, Asherah uh, uh, in Exodus uh, 15. And I'll show you that real quick. I know I'm running out of time, friends, and I've been keeping you long. See, Az Yashir Moshe, Uvane Yisrael, Et Hashirah Hazot. See, and, and, and Moses sang this song unto the children of Israel, Et Hashirah Hazot, this spe spe specific song. They say Ladonai because they don't pronounce God's divine name. Lahiwa, Beyamru, Leamor, Ashirah, Ladonai, Kigaaga, O Susvera, Kebora, Ma, Beyom. I will sing unto the Lord that he has cast the horse and his rider into the depth of that sea. That's the Antichrist. One horse, one rider. Not 600 as we read in Exodus story. Okay? Now, how many of you guys remember Revelation 11? And there was given me a reed like unto a rod, and the angel stood, saying, Rise and measure the temple of God and the altar of them that worship therein. But the court which is without the temple, leave out and measure it not, for it is given unto the Gentiles. In the holy city shall they tread underfoot forty and two months, and I will give power unto my two witnesses, and they shall prophesy a thousand two hundred and three score days, clothed in sackcloth. These are the two olive trees and the two candlesticks standing before the God of the earth. Was it not Moses and Elijah that stood beside Yeshua, Jesus, on Mount Transfiguration? Yes or no? Yes, it was. Is Yeshua not the olive branch written in Zechariah with the two, or excuse me, the golden lampstand written in Zechariah? Yes or no? Yes, he is. Is it not two olive branches on either side of that golden Menorah that's standing there in Zechariah? Yes, it is. Who are the two olive branches there? The two witnesses. Who are the two witnesses? Well, the two that stood on the other side of the golden lampstand we was here on the earth was Moses and Elijah. Hello, somebody in the house say amen. Jeez. These are the two olive trees and the two candlesticks standing before the God of the earth. That's why there's two olive trees sitting in there in Jerusalem today to this day that are 2,000 years old. They represent Moses and Elijah, and that's why they've not died as of yet. And if any man will hurt them, fire proceedeth out of their mouth and devour their enemies. And I don't think that's a literal fire either. I believe that what they say will happen. Unlike a lot of the false prophets in America that say and nothing happens, or say and part of it happens and part doesn't happen, what these guys will say will take place. It's not going to be playing church there brother and if any man will hurt them he must in this manner be killed these have power to shut heaven that it rain not in the days of their prophecy by the way that fire was Elijah when they when they tried when they Romans when they sent the Roman soldiers up there to get Elijah what did he do he said if I be a man of God then let fire come down here and destroy it and the fire came out of his mouth but not literally see but what he said happened fire came down and devoured him right there's your fire Elijah right have power over the waters to turn them to blood. Well, it wasn't it Moses that went down and smote the water and turned it to blood. Now, a lot of people say, no, Enoch, he never died. Oh, you, got, you forgot, Brother Steve. It's appointed once to man to die, and, and after this, a judgment. All right? Appointed at once. I've gone over this so many times, I'm, I'm getting tired of it. Um, appointed once to die, right? Okay, that's Hebrews 9.27, right? Here we go. As it is appointed a man wants to die, but after this, the judgment. It has nothing to do with you or me. Okay? For Christ has entered into the holy places made with hands, which are the figures of the true, but in the heaven itself now appear in the presence of God for us. Right? Nor yet that she, he should offer himself often. As the high priests enter into the holy place where every year with blood of others. For then must often he have suffered since the foundation of the world. But now once he in the end of the world hath a, uh, he appeared to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. And is appointed unto man. And that's actually singular. Once to die but after this the judgment. In other words, this scripture has nothing to do with Moses, Elijah, Enoch, or anybody else. It only dealt with Yeshua. He was appointed once to die, not die a hundred times for you. I hope that made sense. So many people jumped to that one. I'm like, you got to be kidding me. Does anybody ever, how many people just, 
You heard it, somebody else says it, and you believe it because of that. God bless you. I pray, God, that it changes your heart and you realize what is going on now. So anyway, it rains not in the day of their men, and have power over the waters, turning the blood, and smite the earth with plagues as often as they will. That was, that was Moses. Aaron was with him. Aaron is another type of a witness, but it's actually Moses and Elijah. And, and I don't say it's literally Moses and Elijah. It may be, but it may also be two people anointed with that same spirit of these men. All right? And when they shall have finished their testimony, the beasts that ascended out of the bottomless pit shall make war against them and shall overcome them and kill them. And their dead bodies shall lie in the street, the great city, which is spiritually called Sodom and Egypt, where also our Lord was crucified. So it's coming, friends. And also Obadiah, verse 21, chapter 1. And saviors shall come up on Mount Zion to judge the Mount of Esau, and the kingdom shall be the Lord. Do you know why it says that saviors or deliverers, Moshim is in Hebrew right there, Behatzion, Lishapat, uh, which is to judge, right? They come up on Mount Zion to judge the Mount of Esau. God refers to Mount Zion as the Mount of Esau because they gave the official seat on Mount Zion to the Pope of Rome. That's why it says to judge the Mount of Esau. Rome will be judged right there. I can't say for sure, but it looks like to me that the ministry of the two witnesses began on Mount Zion. We'll have to wait and see just how that goes. I'm Stephen Benoon. I trust this message has been a blessing to you. I know it's been lengthy. Again, if God lays it on your heart to support this ministry, we do need your help. We thank you for your help. And God bless you in these late, late hours. If you do not know Yeshua, if you do not know Jesus Christ as your Savior, I, I implore you to please... Seek Him with all of your heart. Repent of your sins. That's the important thing. Repent of your sins. And then be baptized in His name, which is the name of Jesus Christ, the name of Yeshua HaMashiach. Be baptized in His name. Washing away as, as an outward you know, work, showing that you have accepted and repented of your sins and that you have accepted his sacrifice, his life, and that you want the life that was in him to come inside of you and that you are willing to be the temple for him to lay his head on. Remember how it said that John, remember how John talked about it? You know, he never said his name, but he's talking about his favorite disciple and he laid his head on the bosom of Yeshua. But it also said in the Bible that he had no place to lay his head. He would like to take a rest inside of you. And it starts with repentance. Being baptized. If you've never been baptized and want to be baptized, find someone in a local church near you. If you're near where I'm at, I will baptize you. If I'm in Israel and you want to be baptized and you want to let me know, I'll gladly baptize you anywhere. But be baptized immersed in water. That was a tradition, a custom in Israel. At the mikvah. This is not just a Christian thing. This is a mikvah. And I've, I've still got a video I've never showed you guys. One there right there happened in Jerusalem where I found the active mikvah that Jesus himself, James, his brother, and all of them were using, and it's still active today. We need to do a tour like Brother Begley has done sometime, take you guys there and show you things there. Uh, I just don't know how to do these type of things. Anyway, we love you. God bless you. Thank you. Again, inside the description below, links to our websites, our address if you prefer to, to, to donate by mail. God bless you and thank you for watching. Shalom.